So right now, my previous promotional contracts has expired. My team are doing their job back end to negotiate the best deal for me going forward. Once that's all sorted, me and you can start our negotiations for the fight. We saw some uh, comments from Anthony Yard last night regarding promotional situation. Well, our position is very, very um, simple. We have a contract with him, which is still in force. Okay, so why did he say that last night? I don't know. You have to ask him. Maybe that's what he feels, what he's being advised. Lady Chan, I think we've got a bit of a mazza on our hands right now. Yard and Bawaxi are supposed to mirror each other in the ring, but that's not happening. They're now mirroring each other due to having the same issues with their promoters. Matram are disputing breach of contract with Joshua Boazzi saying that he's still got a fight or maybe two left on his Matram contract. But regardless, with the help of this dodgy guy, Majid, he's hooked up with Ben Shalom and Boxer. Lawsuit to come. And now, Yard in his own words, said that his promotional agreement has ended and Frank Warren is saying, no, 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 you still got fights with us. And you have to ask, how, how do we get here? How do we get here? Boatsy's case with Matram could keep him out of the ring, conceivably for a, a little while, depending how it goes. And this is what I was saying earlier. Yard wants to avoid getting in a situation where he's kept out of the ring. Now, looking at all parties from... Matram, Boatsy, Yard, and Frank Warren. How hard can this be to work out? If they signed a six-fight contract with you, surely we can count the amount of fights they have and know where we're at. Or if there's a time period where the contract expires, it must be in writing. There should be no confusion from Boatsy or Yard of how much fights they've had. How do we end up here? How is Yard and Boatsy not the easiest fight to make? The promoter seem on board. It's 50-50. I don't know if Tunde or Yard are on board with that because they have often said they're the A-side of a Boatsy. But it's 50-50. The pay-per-view will be shared across both platforms, Sky and TNT. And the build-up to this could be really good. I think the chemistry between these two London lads is sufficient enough to drum up some interest. I'll definitely buy the pay-per-view. So why are we here? Why are we here? I don't know. Frank Warren, his history of lawsuits with fighters Ricky Burns, Cal Zaggy, Hatton, Tony Bellew, and there's more, didn't exactly put him in a good light to potential fighters. Let's keep it real. Around 2012 or maybe 2013, there was a load of Box Nation fighters who moved across to be with Eddie Hearn. Rather than Frank Warren, there was a whole load. Nathan Cleverly, Ricky Burns, Tony Bellew. But Frank's wised up. In the last 11 years, I think he threatened to sue a newspaper, from what I can remember, but nothing in the form of fighters has there been any legal cases. There might be the odd one here or there, but he's lost that malicious reputation. And in the interview with Box Nation, I believe, he was keen to not want this to go into the courtroom and I detected a bit of hurt in Frank Warren's voice I believe Frank Warren really likes Anthony Yard as one of his fighters Frank is old school and he can be short with people and he's not shy about letting people know what he thinks of them but I I could sense here he didn't want to say nothing hurtful not because oh they might leave he likes Anthony Yard and he wants it resolved Hopefully they can make the Boatsy fight. It doesn't go to court. There's a truckload of money there. You know, I've been watching Frank Warren since the 80s. I think I've got a good judge on his public persona. And maybe I've got it wrong. Maybe it's not that he likes Yard. Maybe he's just mellowing in his old age. Who knows? Doubt it though. I haven't got all the details. I'm not privy to all the details from Yard or Frank Warren. But perhaps Anthony shouldn't have went to Twitter releasing the information that his promotional situation was over and that his team and negotiating this deal to get the Boatsy fight done. But perhaps they wanted to let Frank know that they're not playing and we're not having it. But off camera, behind the scenes, we don't know how deep this thing goes. Now here's another story from the UK 
where a fighter doesn't seem to know if he's a free agent or not. I want to talk about Chris Eubank Jr. There was a bit of noise that he was potentially a free agent uh, a couple of weeks ago, but after speaking to Nissa yesterday, he said there's news imminent. So um, I guess we can kind of rubbish the free agent stuff. Yeah, listen, there's a lot of was a lot of noise. You know, but... where does that come from? That comes from lots of different places. But at the end of the day, he's desperate to get a, a big fight, and we want to put him in a big fight, and I'm, we're working on a few things. What's going on in the UK? All these fighters don't seem to know if they're contracted to their promoter or not. We were led to believe that Chris Eubank is a free agent and now Kelly Salins just rubbished it. Crazy. Chris talking about his fighting Terence Crawford. No. You're not. I'm so swift and that's a natural fact. I'm like Zorro. Like Zorro. I'm like Zorro. I'm like Zorro. I'm like Zorro. 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 Zorro gets an unexpected title opportunity after Isaac Chamberlain pulls out on a day of a bid Wednesday morning. So that's who Chef Clark will be fighting for the British Cruiserweight title, 25th of June, first direct arena on the undercard of Catterall Taylor. Now, Ellis Zorro was knocked out pretty badly by Jai Opataya on their reckoning on December, and that was his last fight. I was shocked by the announcement that it would be Ellis, but the board have approved it. Ellis is a Frank Warren fighter, and Frank and Eddie, the unlikely dynamic duo, came up with this, and they offered up Ellis Zorro. It is what it is. 25th of May. First Direct Arena leads on the undercard of Catterall versus Taylor. I was shocked by the choice, personally, after the violent knockout that Ellis suffered against Jai in Riyadh. They're going to criticise Ellis Zorro, but the facts are, Boxer dominate the division. They've got Lawal, he lost two times on the trot. They've got Vidal, they've got Isaac, who just vacated the belt. They've got Akoli, who's fighting for the Bridgeweight title. Riyadh and Billy and Smith are facing off for that WBO belt. So, the other options were Jordan Thompson, but it looks like he's moving up to heavy. Jack Massey looked like a good option, in my opinion. Callum Johnson's moved up to Cruiser, but Frank and Eddie decided on Zorro. The British board approved it, and it is what it is. We could have had a better fight, maybe if the media spoke up more about all these boxer fighters putting out a purse bids. And vacating belts and shit. Could have had a better fight. You know, boxing want to talk about Isaac's going for European glory. Isaac wasn't going for European glory up until a couple of weeks ago on the Fabio Fraser Clark undercard. He was trying to make a fight with Vidal Riley. He invaded Vidal's interview. And then when they saw a match from are going to pursue getting this fight for Shevin Clark as the mandatory to fight Isaac, that's when the Mikhail Shellac European title fight came into play. Talking about. Isaac is not a boxer fighter. He's a Mick Hennessy fighter. Well, at the least, if you wasn't being disingenuous, you would say you'd be co-promoted by a boxer and Mick Hennessy. Will you show me where Mick Hennessy's name is on the paperwork for Isaac's last three fights? It's kind of like the Boots and his situation. Boots is in the PBC fighter. Why are you talking shit about the PBC? And Boots has fought exclusively on PBC cards for the last five years or so. But they want to play this game of semantics. Boots is not a PBC fighter. Ellis will be a big underdog based on his last fight. 17 wins, 7 inside the distance, 1 loss. 31 years of age. Siobhan will be a big favourite. 8 and 0, 6 inside the distance. 33 years of age. Good amateur pedigree. I'm not sure what Ellis did in the amateurs actually. And at least this farce is over until... The next time boxer are confronted with a mandatory against a matron fighter or a purse bid. Shakur is fighting on July 6th in New Jersey, Prudential Center. We'll announce the opponent relatively shortly. And we've had a, a great run with Shakur, who's having, you know, he's an incredible fighter with incredible skills. Uh, but our contract is over with the July 6th fight. Hopefully, we'll maintain uh, a relationship with Shakur and uh, continue that. But he's a free agent after the July 6th fight. And so we'll see how that all plays out. Let's keep it 100. That July opponent should be Edwin De Santos. Yeah? I'm not getting how fighters like Shakur and his buddy, well, I don't know if they're still buddies, Richardson Hitchens talk so highly of themselves than getting contentious fights and you're not running it back to show us the star quality. 
Not getting that at all. Bob Arum said the opponent is going to be tough in July. Well, it's not going to be Edwin DeSantos. Richardson Hitchens said, that, yeah, he'd rematch Gustavo Lemos, but he's not exactly visible on social media saying, I need this fight next. This fight or nothing. I'm not hearing that. And in my opinion, that's how it should be. They all tried to be the next Floyd, these young cats. Well, Floyd ran back the Castillo fight and the Marcus Maidana fight. Do the history. Jay Prince, Shakur's manager, supposedly has a good working relationship with Bob Arum. So he could persuade Shakur to stay at top rank. But I have heard that Shakur is going over to the zone. A lot of people are going to assume it's Eddie Hearn. And he did say that there's five or six people, consensus pound for pound fighters, who are asking to join Matchroom and the zone. So that's kind of swaying my opinion towards Matchroom, but I'm not sure. But I do hear he's out of there. He even hinted in a Twitter post not too long ago, free agent this year, and he's got the eyes emoji underneath. Bob Aram said he wanted to make a Lomachenko fight. Providing Loma gets past Cambosos for that vacant lightweight strap. And then unify with Shakur. Crossroads fight at Manchester for the WBA International Super Featherweight title. I didn't think there was any belts at stake. You know what I mean? But the Salons and Challenge 5 must have had a rummage through the WBA's trash can and came up with that. Jordan Gill weighed in 129.5. Zelfa, 129.6. Now, word around these boxing streets, from what people witnessed at the weigh-in, is that Zelfa, his stomach look, looked a little drawn in. Has he spent too long at Super Feather? He's 30 years of age now. Jordan is 29 years of age. You know, punch resistance is always an important component and factor when breaking down and predicting the winner. Zelfa debuted at 135 and has fought as high as welterweight, 147. In another contest, he was 140 and change. Turned pro in 2014. Jordan Gill only moved out of the featherweight division in 2022 after suffering a crushing loss to Kiko Martinez for the European title. He lost in four. Kiko is a common opponent. Zelfa took a questionable decision over Kiko over 12 rounds. And what I'm saying here is I remember Jordan getting stopped as a featherweight when he was unbeaten. But maybe at super feather, punch resistance increases. While Zelfa, maybe hanging around the weight class too long, could be compromised. I've picked Jordan Gill. I don't like picking against Zelfa, mainly because of his uncle. But I've picked Jordan Gill. And I'm not missing this one on Saturday. I'll tell you that much now. I'm looking forward to it. In 2019, Charlie Edwards was stopped by Julio Cesar Martinez. Then the result was changed to a no contest, saying that Charlie was hit with a body shot whilst on one knee. Charlie later vacated the belt, because, you know, he took hands in that fight, you know what I mean? It was a questionable no contest to me. It looked like a legit stoppage. He gave the belt up and wasn't seen in the ring for over a year after. And this is only his fourth fight since 2019. 31 years of age, fighting for the WBC international title. His opponent's name is George Orai from France. There's probably a more fancy way to pronounce it, but yeah, it is what it is. George Orai. It's on Channel 5, if you're interested. Start time on Channel 5 is 10 o'clock, but check around on your free view player, The Zone on YouTube. You might find sections of the card in them places or the whole thing. Channel 5 will only be broadcasting the main event and maybe one more fight. Malik Scott and Deontay Wilder training for a southpaw. All will be revealed on Monday. Press conference 5 on 5. But it looks like Wilder could be taking on Zhang. And even the greatest cruiserweights that's ever lived, Evander Holyfield, when he stepped up to the big boys and beat Daddy Bowen and it's Lewis, he was found wanting. You can beat the average big ones, but you can't beat the elite big ones because size really matters. And we have weight divisions for a reason. We have weight classes for a reason. Yeah, to protect boxers being disadvantaged by bigger opponents, no doubt. But we also have weight classes so we can have multiple weight champions. Elite guys who can go up divisions. Henry Armstrong, Sam Langford, Roberto Duran, Thomas Hearns, Evander Holyfield, who actually started as a pro as a light heavy. The elite fighters can do it. And Alexander Yusek is elite. 
You mentioned David Hay. David Hay actually beat a bigger champion than Tyson Fury to win that WBA belt in value F. He was seven foot, way bigger than Tyson Fury. He said Holyfield came up short against Bo and Lewis. Well, I would argue the second fight, Holyfield deserved at least a draw. The first one, Lewis was robbed. Holyfield lost 2-1 against Bo. Third fight, he knocked Bo down. Bo was out on his feet. The bell saved him. Holyfield had nothing left in the tank and Bo stopped him following round. Epic fight. Muhammad Ali won the light heavyweight gold in the Rome Olympics before he turned pro. What about Max Bear when he wiped the floor with Primo Canero? Canero was six foot six, full of muscle. Probably had at least a 60, 70 pound advantage on Max Bear. And Max Bear floored him about 10 times and stopped him. Also, the man that Tyson Fury was named after was often outweighed by up to a stone, stone and a half in his championship reign against the likes of Tony Tucker, Carl the Truth Williams, Burbeck, Bone Crusher, Tyrell Biggs. And Yusek said himself, what are Tyson Fury's best attributes? He's big. Is that what Tyson Fury's banking on? Just being big? Will that be enough? This is why it's an intriguing fight. Can't wait. When Tyson Fury was ducking David Price and opted to fight Martin Rogan for the Irish title rather than challenging Pricey for the British heavyweight title, Yusek was in the amateurs and the WSB beating the likes of Joe Joyce, big heavyweights, Nistor, Clement Russo, who beat Wilder as an amateur. That's what he was doing. While Fury was ducking David Price. Pricey beat Fury in amateurs. Fury did floor him. Pricey got back up and outpointed him. Ducking David Price and walked out of the Ustinov fight. Who came in as a late sub for Derek Chisora. Ustinov came in there. Same size as Tyson Fury. Looking in shape. Fury got very paranoid. This is a conspiracy. They're all out to get me. The K2 brothers are out to get me. <laughs> Ustinov was signed to K2. A promotional outlet ran by the Klitschko brothers. Yeah. Yeah, I remember it. It's not a pushover. Let me just stress one thing to you all. I've been training for somebody 6 foot and 17 stone. This guy is 6 foot 8 and 21 stone. Total different style. I've had no sparring, no preparation, nothing. I'm starting to think that the Klitschkos are behind all this. Trying to hold me back. Because you do know this guy is promoted by K2. Sort of sticking him in, yeah, to hold me back. Because of my test in the water, my final eliminator then goes back a longer time again, which allows Vladimir to fap around and pick and choose another opponent in the meanwhile. Therefore puts me on the back burner for even longer. Also Duck Pulev, not a huge heavyweight, but six foot four. A little bigger than most heavyweights that Fury's fought. So he's saying that smaller heavyweights normally give him trouble above big heavyweights. When he fought in Ghanu, who weighed 19 stone, and he didn't have a physical strength advantage over, we saw the real Tyson Fury. All this under training and didn't prepare for him shit is pure fuckery talk. That's all it is. The only supersized heavyweight of the modern era he's beat is Vladimir Klitschko. And he didn't honor Vlad his rematch, did he? In 2022... He picked Derek Chisora as a voluntary over the unbeaten Joyce. This is all facts. And all you Fury sycophants are going to have to deal with it or unsub. This is all facts. All receipt based. So it's not a matter that he just has issues with smaller heavyweights who are quick like Cunningham. He also has done the good big heavyweights as well. Yeah. May the 18th, he will without a doubt be up against possibly the best heavyweight that he's ever faced. Small, big, the size is irrelevant. And with that, I'm gone. Ghost, peace, sayonara.